Welcome to my van tour from Bend, Oregon. My name is Jason Warner. This is my 2017 uh, Mercedes Sprinter 170 4x4 named Mullet the Van on Instagram. Let's take a tour. One of the really cool things about this van is it's truly a four seasons adventure van, but it has the best kitchen you can get in terms of functionality and availability. It's set up in a way that's you know small and tidy so we keep our space, but it also allows for many of the creature comforts that are super important to us when we travel. So coffee, as you probably imagine, is super important. I actually have a grinder down there. In here we have a standard sink. Uh, you know, shuts down to give us more counter space. All of the cabinets and the entire van is built by a company called RB Components, and they're out of Southern California. And the cool thing about RB Components and their builds is that they fabricate all of the cabinetry, and this is all lightweight, which is super important in a van because vans can get very, very heavy very quickly but it's also durable and adjustable so that it doesn't rattle or creak when you're going down the road. And so all of these cabinets are fabricated by RB components. Uh, in here, we keep our dry goods and our seasonings and the things that we use on a regular basis. These cabinets have these nice uh, straps to hold things from jumping out. Down here, we actually have the coffee grinder and uh, some other cookware. So although we have a microwave and we use that almost exclusively for cooking, we also have an induction cooktop that we can set up here if we want to do fancier meals in pots and pans. But we find that we're adventuring so much, we just want to get out and have a great healthy meal and then get out on the bikes or get out on the snowboards or get out on the split boards and do the things that we love to do. But under here, we do have an induction cooktop that we could put up here and, and actually make a, make a nice meal. Other essentials, this houses some of the electronics, which I'll talk about uh, a little bit later in the video. Down here, we actually have the subwoofer. I'm a big fan of music, particularly 80s music. And so that's a 10 inch sub that's driven by a 400 watt amplifier under the seat. It's sitting on top of the S-Bar diesel furnace unit, which is the fan unit that keeps the temperature regulated when it's uh, cold outside. And the S-Bar unit uh, pulls diesel fuel out of the fuel tanks and works just like your furnace at home. So. You set the thermostat for 65 degrees and the furnace will kick on and off and regulate the temperature in the van regardless of how cold it gets. Uh, in this cabinet, we keep other uh, cookware items. So uh, easy, easy to use things, um, easy to clean things. You know, our coffee cups, our wine glasses, our plastic uh, dishware. Uh, we are eco-friendly and we believe a lot in preserving the earth that we all love to recreate in. And so we use a lot of these uh, wooden disposable uh, uh, utensils, which we can uh, obviously break down well and go back to the earth when we're done using them. So, so this is the kitchen and it's really, really functional and it's set up to be compact, but uh, you know, just super functional for how we live in the van. So on this side of the van, which is the passenger side of the van, we have another small galley cabinet. This is a bamboo top uh, on this and they have that throughout the van. In here, we keep more just grab and go food. Uh, I have soups and kind of longer stuff when I don't have time to get to a store, we can grab food from there. And again, it's all secure there. And then this gives you another countertop surface to work on. Uh, down here, everyone wants to talk about toilets. You go onto the forums online, the van life forums, everyone's like, what toilet should I get? Should I get composting? Should I get this toilet? And to be honest, I would get this toilet a hundred times over. It's a Thetford porta potty. It's 160 bucks at Walmart. It doesn't smell. It's easy to dump. It's easy to maintain. It, I can move it so we can pick this up and we can move it to the back of the van. We have a hardwired vacuum to keep clean because when you live in a van, the dust gets everywhere in about five seconds. So we do that and keep the van clean with the dust buster. Along this wall, all of these windows open to help regulate the temperature, most, mostly at night. Um, and then these are kind of a hallmark of the RB components build, and I love them. And so um, these are their stuff sacks. We have tons of L-Track, so we can 
uh, rearrange this. We keep our, you know, our different things in here. So I have toiletries in this one. This is like my little stuff sack for my toiletries. It's grab and go. You can kind of see in there and see what's in there. They add very little weight to the van and they can hold a lot. And so the stuff sacks uh, go all the way back to the rear of the van. Uh, first aid kit over here, just we want to be careful if we get hurt off the grid or whatever. These little uh, L-Track hooks are also super, super cool. RB Components makes these. They're polyethylene. They're indestructible. You can put them around and hang your hats. And then uh, over here, you see these little bright spots. This is my very, very early collection of other van life uh, patches. And so we're going to do a little mullet the van patch uh, and we'll have those. And so if you see us on the road, you'll be able to get your mullet the van uh, Instagram patch uh, when, when we do that. So. This is my son, Ryan, who's 16. And this is my lovely wife, Angie. So some of the challenges of living in a van, whether it's one night or a hundred nights, is the space is really small. Uh, um, you know, you have to learn to be flexible when you're traveling with other people and uh, moving around the van is a little bit strategic if you're trying to do different things. So, uh, you, but you do kind of fall into a rhythm where you kind of understand how the van functions and how work flows in the van. And so that was a bit of a challenge. Um, uh, for me and you know in terms of uh, migrating into more nights in the van and less nights at home so um, secondly uh, I work full-time still I'm an entrepreneur I have my own software company and uh, so I work from the van and so I had to adapt my work style to uh, you know to life in the van so I'll get up uh, you know overnight at Mount Bachelor some nights and I'll get up and I'll get first tracks and I'll snowboard for a few hours and then I'll work the rest of the day from the van and so I've learned just to be as comfortable in the van working as I would be at my desk in my home office. And for me, when we first started looking into van life uh, and purchasing a van, uh, I first, I walked into the van, looked around and decided it was <laughs> too, way small. too small. Um, <laughs> it was not for me initially. And I just, I had a really difficult time seeing how we, especially a family of four and two teenagers, would fit and be able to um, maneuver and, and function well in a van. When I finally stepped into the van and looked around and started to give it some thought about how we can um, downsize what we packed, um, be really smart about the way we pack, um, minimize what we, we bring into the van, um, and then just have coming in with a lot of patience um, <laughs> and a lot of good manners, um, learned that we really live outside of the van. So the door stays open most of the time with the exception of being really cold outside, but um, we live out of the van. So the van has become a real um, place of comfort, even though it's small, we enjoy being close to one another for at least small periods of time. <laughs> and then living outside of the van and um, going out into, um, the world into the woods and go hiking or biking or whatever it is that we like to do. So this is where we sleep, a very important part of the van. Above the main cabin where we sit, we have a max air fan, which is ideal. And then we have a second max air fan here. Oftentimes we'll turn on one fan to bring air in and then reverse the second fan to push air out. And then we get circulation uh, in the van. This right here is a pretty high tech roof mount air conditioner. Uh, we can actually run this all night with the battery system we have in the van. And so we don't use it very much because we're oftentimes at elevation, but uh, we could if we wanted to because of the air conditioning and because of the battery system we have in the van. So the bed is super comfy. We have a three inch memory foam mattress that we keep on here and then uh, it's super comfortable. I, I have my best nights of sleep uh, in the van. So all of these windows open. Uh, we have covers that can go on them. Uh, oftentimes we'll cover everything up, which gives us uh, kind of uh, blackout shades, if you will, so we can sleep really well and then uh, not be, uh, you know, not be disturbed when the sun comes up. So this is just a little $150 or $89. I don't even know what I paid for it. It's just a Kindle Fire. It'll actually connect via Bluetooth to the stereo system. So I have kind of a surround sound. And then this is obviously movable on the L-Track. We can move it around wherever we want. We can actually move this bed 
forward uh, about 30 inches if we want, which creates an opportunity for us to use an interior shower if necessary. Uh, mostly we shower out the back. Um, I tell people you haven't really lived until you've been buck naked in the woods taking a shower. Um, it's actually a great experience. So, and then the last thing I'll mention is, uh, this is one of my favorite products uh, about van life. This is a Patagonia macro puff blanket. This blanket is just, it's super cool, um, like most of Patagonia stuff. So it's kind of one of my prized possessions in the van. So obviously the seats in the van are, are swivel seats. We actually have two tables. So this table is a bamboo top, set your drinks in it, um, and then it's easily stowed. It works the same way that like a table in a boat would work. So we just pop this out. This is a product also made by RB, of course, and I pop it out and put it up above the headliner shelf, uh, which RB puts in all their vans as well. And so this can be a workstation. Uh, we have two kids. If we want, we can sit here and play cards or have a dinner. Um, and then there's also a cocktail version of this. that's about half the size that we can also put in uh, just if we want a different table. In the front of the cabin, one of the coolest things about these sprinters is you can cruise on the freeway at 85 or 90 miles an hour. And I have the ticket from Nevada from last week to prove it. Um, and you can just get places, which sounds like it's not that big a deal until you've ridden in other rigs that can only go 60 or 65 miles an hour. But for typical use cases, you know, 98% of your time is on the highway. And so you want a vehicle that can get up to speed and stay at speed and get you places. So, uh, you know, you're not going 60 miles an hour everywhere, which can be, be a bit of a drag. So in addition to just how great this thing is to drive, it's smooth, it's quiet, it's comfortable. Um, it has a Pioneer, uh, I think it's a DDX 9904, uh, double din stereo system that powers uh, six speakers in the cabin plus the 10 inch sub uh, which is powered from a separate amplifier uh, below where I'm sitting and the sound system in this thing is crazy which is really important to me. Uh, thank you RB Components for uh, building such a killer van with uh, such a great sound system because when we post up we'll open the slider door we'll kick one of the rear doors out and we'll have some nice sound uh, when it's appropriate to do so. Most of the time we're in the mountains and the woods to be quiet, not to uh, rock out the neighbors, but there are those events where you wanna do that. So everything is hands-free. So I have a cellular phone mount uh, over there, which allows me to navigate uh, through CarPlay on this head unit. And yeah, it's just a really, really easy van to drive and very, very comfortable. Uh, down below this seat, uh, we actually have a pump over system for an auxiliary fuel tank. And so the rig can carry 47 gallons of diesel, uh, which is almost twice as much as the 24 and a half gallon factory tank that Mercedes puts in these rigs. And so when I went to Baja, I filled up all 47 gallons. I drove across the border when I ran out in the main tank. I just flipped this little uh, switch down here. This is a system made by Agile Off-Road, if I'm not mistaken. And then it just pumps over from the auxiliary tank. And so I can go almost 800 miles uh, with the fuel. So uh, yeah, I think that's it for the cabin. It's a great place to spend time. And then obviously uh, make your way to the back when you get to your destination. And it's no time to set up camp. It's just uh, you're already set up by the time you arrive, which is one of the benefits of uh, this kind of van life experience. One of the things you don't really understand about living in a van or overnighting in a van, uh, unless you've done it, is regulating the space that you're living in, uh, in terms of temperature regulation. Um, and so this particular van has uh, some really cool features. And these are must haves, I think, in any van of any make, any model. And the first is it has this privacy curtain. And so it seems like a simple thing. We just roll this out. It snaps up, it takes five seconds to deploy. It's just a regular nylon, but this will help regulate the temperature inside the van in a really remarkable way because when it's hot out, this, the inside of the cabin is cooking because of the glass. You know, glass is your uh, least effective thermal barrier, whether it's cold or hot outside. So this covers it off, which keeps the heat in if it's cold. So if we're up at Mount Bachelor, having this up uh, helps us regulate the temperature, keeps the heat from the S-Bar diesel furnace inside of the van. And that's why you'll see vans, they all have these window coverings. These are just uh, insulated window coverings again by RB components and they just attach with quarter turn fasteners so we can put them down like this it takes 
you know, 20 seconds to deploy them and it covers up the window. And that does two things. It does privacy, but it also does temperature regulation in the van. If it's cold outside or even if it's hot outside, you cover up your windows and it keeps the temperature regulated in the van. One last thing about this curtain. Because we can have this curtain, it allows us to shut down anywhere in where we are and not put window coverings in the front windows. And that means the van just looks like it's parked. It looks like an adventure van that someone parked overnight. There's no way to tell that there's someone inside, which allows us to do stealth camping uh, on the trip down to Baja, Mexico last week or week two weeks ago. Uh, one of the nights I stayed in downtown Scottsdale, Arizona, and nobody gives uh, any attention to the van because they can see the front cabin, they can look in, they can see the seats are vacant, they can't see past the, uh, the uh, curtain, and it keeps the temperature regulated in privacy, but also just looks like a parked vehicle, which is a pretty important concept to understand if you intend to do any sort of stealth camping in neighborhoods. And I've camped in downtown cities everywhere and uh, never had a problem because of that. So. The things that was good for me to experience was that you know in many conversations people have their opinions on what works best for them so there is the 144 there's the 170 there's the 170 extended but i think it's important if you are considering purchasing a van that you look at different models you look at different um, layouts and really figure out how you're going to use your van um, what you're going to use it for and then build it according to your lifestyle so everyone's is a little bit different so it's always kind of fun and exciting to see what each person has done with their van and um, what works best for them what they've added or what they've taken away um, and then the other thing I wanted to add to convenience as well is um, with the van sizes that you can you can fit anywhere. You can go downtown bend even and fit in most parking spaces. And so it does make camping in many places um, really easy to do. Um, and it is, it is easy to pick up without a plan, an extended plan, and just go figure out where you want to go and what you want to do, where you want to stay at the time along the road. I feel like something too that not a lot of people will take into consideration, whether it's getting a new car or getting a van, is you're not just getting a van there's a whole community behind it so you're getting a whole lot of homies that you can go out and stay with because personally i know before my dad got a van he was a total loser and um now he's got a whole lot of friends that he can go out and go camping with that's great so um my i feel like <laughs> <laughs> one thing that not a lot of people take into consideration when buying anything really is that there is most often an entire community behind the whole scheme of things and it's fun to be able to go out and meet people living their own lives in their own van in different places across the globe and being able to kind of like she mentioned earlier bounce off other people's ideas and see things that maybe you want to get for your van or things that they want to get from their van and be able to like pool ideas and go on adventures not just with yourself but with friends too all right so this is obviously the outside of mullet the van uh, you'll see we have a little campsite set up uh, i want to talk about a couple of my favorite products so one of them is this uh, these lanterns and these are made by a company out of utah called devos outdoor this is their light ranger uh, led lantern what's what i love about this is one it collapses down to about this big the feet fold in uh, this is all made with aluminum it comes with a spike so if you're in an area where it's windy you can spike it into the ground uh, these adjust really easily they're adjustable uh, 1200 lumens they'll run on high for over four hours on every charge oh and one of the coolest thing is you can just pop this off and now you have a lantern for walking around or if you're going to go uh, out away from the campsite has a little hang thing so if you're out and about and wanting to go somewhere else and hang this up you can do that and so these uh, light ranger lanterns i think are going to be a really uh, killer product a couple things about this side of the van we have an awning i don't think i need to pull it out but it's a fiamma uh, 45s uh, awning it goes all the way out and then we have the amp research power step so when we close the door to the van the step will stow away automatically we have onboard air so when we need to air down when we're going four-wheel driving uh, we can air down and then we have uh, 
it's a Vier system underneath the van. And so what that allows me to do is air down the tires and then I can air them back up. Uh, it takes about 15 minutes. We have uh, an agile off-road uh, suspension kit on the van. So upgraded leaf springs in the back, Fox shocks. Finally, uh, on this side of the van, uh, we have LED lighting as well uh, that's integrated into the roof rack and all that's controllable, uh, you know, from inside the cabin and, you know, is great for camping. So I think one of the things that's unique about this particular van, it is truly an adventure van. It can go anywhere in all seasons, but it also has the, uh, you know, a lot of the creature comforts you've seen in other parts of the video. So here we are with Moet the van. People ask why mow it, and uh, there's a long story with that, but uh, as you might remember uh, from the 1980s when mullets were in fashion, kind of business up front, party in the back, so it's kind of a fun little name. Out back you have RB Components fabricated ladder, which goes up to the roof rack. This is the Wilco off-road hitch swing. The benefit of this is it can be moved out of the way. Just pull this pin and this will swivel out of the way. So if you do have bike racks, on the back, uh, you can uh, you know, swing them out of the way, open the doors, and then swing the bikes back. Uh, over here, we have an external uh, spray. So if we wanna spray down our mountain bikes, uh, we can attach a hose and uh, spray down the mountain bikes. Then we have another uh, onboard air outlet here, which allows us to air up the tires after we've aired down uh, for four wheel driving. So all the uh, doors have the 270 uh, degree swivels. Speakers up there for my 80s music. We open up the doors and we have great sound uh, in the campsite if we want it. So back here on this side, uh, we keep all of our onboard air uh, stuff for off-roading. Over here, we have uh, the shower. So in order to shower outside the rig, we just take this uh, shower. There's a shower curtain. If I put the doors like this, I can hang a shower curtain for privacy and then take a shower off the back of the rig. To take a shower, all you do is attach to this water tank and then you have your hot and cold water and you can take a shower that's as hot as your home shower. In the back of the van, we have the shower unit, which has got some teak wood uh, shower mat here. So when I do need a shower in the van, I'll slide the bed forward. I'll set up a shower curtain here. There's quarter turn fasteners on the ceiling to do that. And then we can shower inside. That's the 27 gallon water tank, some storage on top, more stuff sacks. You can never have enough of these RB component stuff sacks. L-Track everywhere. On this side over here, we have my snowboard rack because I'm still hoping to get up to Mount Bachelor before the season ends at the end of May. And then that's kind of the control panel for all the electrical system. The RB Components bug net just drops down, it zips up. Uh, it's super convenient for coming and going. And so it's just a highly, highly versatile uh, adventure van. So. so now we're on top of the van. The van is completely outfitted with 300 watts of solar in the front. So this is the RB Components roof rack system. You'll see more L-Track. Just you cannot go wrong with putting L-Track. Those are the crossbars. So if I wanted to, I could store paddle boards or other uh, I could put a rooftop box up here and do different things. They obviously can move along that L track. Um, on the front, integrated with the rack, you'll see that uh, in the future is a light bar and some other LED lighting system. This is the top of the Max Air fan, which conveniently fits between these two Rome Adventure cases. We will come up here and sit, uh, have a glass of wine. It's a great place to watch the sunset. Um, we like to sit on these Rome Adventure cases because they are kind of bench size. And then they also allow for some great storage. And so we can open this up. I'll show you the inside of these. Typically what I will keep in the Rome Adventure cases are things I don't need every day, just so I don't have to climb up and down the ladder to get up here. Uh, it's a great place to spend a late evening as the sun goes down, um, but also is super functional for carrying things. And then obviously the 300 watts of solar is a really important part of the whole battery system. So yeah, this is uh, what it's like from on top of Mullet the van. On the front end of the van, uh, we have some very important features. So the first we'll start at the top, I guess, and work our way down. We have a blazing LED light bar up there that throws a lot of light. Um, it's actually controlled by one of those old school 
uh, foot switches that they used to put in cars to control the high beams. And so what's nice is when you turn on the light bar on a rocker switch on the panel, the smart guys at RB Components also put in one of those little rocker switches that you can step on with your foot so you can toggle the lights on and off. We have another light bar up front, which is both amber and white. Uh, amber for snow or dust is kind of nice, kind of a fog light system. This particular van came with the factory LED package from Mercedes, which is great. Um, and then up here, you'll see there's this little keypad, and this is a CompuStar system. And what this allows me to do is it allows me to lock the van or unlock the van right from the keypad. You just press on it and it'll lock the van or unlock the van. And that is something I use every week because we'll be coming and going and we want to lock the van. If you're going paddle boarding or something, you don't really want to carry your keys. You can leave the keys in the rig, lock it here and unlock it from the keypad. So that's a, a really cool feature from a company called CompuStar. Out front, uh, we have the hitch mount uh, receiver here. So it's, it's all built in uh, so that if I wanted to carry a bike rack out front, I could, or other things. This could also be used as a recovery point for off-roading if necessary. And so that's, uh, you know, that's the front of the van. Underneath the hood, we have some really uh, cool technology as well. So right down here, I installed six lithium 100 amp hour battleborn self-heated batteries and so two of them are here two of them are on the back side of the rig and then two on the other side of the rig and on top of this is a redark brand uh, 50 amp dc to dc charger and so what that does is it allows me to charge the lithium batteries um, when i'm driving off the standard alternator now a lot of people who are really familiar with these systems will say, well, you're drawing 50 amps. What about the batteries? What about this Redark unit being under the hood? What about under hood temperatures? But this system has worked flawlessly. So Redark is a company out of Australia and they built their DC to DC charger in order to withstand high temperatures. Now these Battleborn batteries under here, we also installed a temperature sensor on the battery. And so um, with that, through the technology, we have an inverter charger from Victron. We have a shunt in an IP68 box underneath the van. And all of that talks to the Victron app on my phone. And so I've been able to monitor the temperature of these batteries when I'm driving. This unit will turn itself off if it does get too hot. For example, if you're rock crawling or going really slow on a super hot day, the underhood temperature uh, might get exceeded. Um, and then this unit would turn itself off and stop charging the batteries. And so this setup has worked really, really well. Another really cool feature is that they're self-heating. If we go up to the Arctic Circle and it's minus 10 degrees without onboard heating inside the battery, we would lose all power in the rig because the Battleborn uh, batteries wouldn't be able to discharge. Any lithium battery can't discharge below minus four Fahrenheit. And so Battleborn addressed that problem by putting a self-heating battery together. So it has onboard technology that'll keep itself warm when it's cold, which allows me to, to uh, basically go anywhere at any temperature. And then just a shout out to our local boy, Jacob at Ben Battery, uh, who put this system in for us and it's been great and they really know their stuff. So if you're in Oregon and need any sort of battery technology for your Sprinter van or, your, or any sort of RV, uh, Ben Battery is a great place to go. He's the most knowledgeable guy on battery technology I've ever met. So, so yeah, so that's kind of the front end of mow at the van and a little bit about the power systems. And this will allow us to stay out off the grid into perpetuity. Um, I literally, uh, I think I could be gone for three months and never have to plug into shore power uh, because of the nature of, of the charging system and the nature of the batteries that we have in the rig, so. So this was super cool. Thanks for joining our van tour in beautiful Bend, Oregon. Uh, if you do make it out to Bend or want to follow along on our adventures, uh, Mow It The Van on Instagram is the van that we just got the tour from and we'd love to have you join. Uh, special thanks to uh, some really important vendors in the van life community. The first is RB Components. Uh, which is at rbcomponents.com. They built the van and all the components in the van. A special thanks to Ben Battery who did the 
um, Battleborn uh, lithium system in the van with all the Victron components. It's amazing. It's a game changing technology. Um, special thanks to Devos Outdoor uh, for building cool products that make van life adventures better, like their Light Ranger uh, LED lanterns. Um, and yeah, just uh, thanks for uh, joining and checking out our van and look us up. Uh, hit us up on social media at our Instagram account, Mullet the Van, if you make it out to Bend, and we'll see you on the road or in the mountains. Mm -hmm.